Hey, you're watching part three of the Power Rangers Morphing VFX tutorial on Hyperdrive Pictures. I'm Steven Zarita, and this week we're going to show you how to do the lightning slamming effect that happens right at the beginning of the morph. And also, I got a couple other questions on how to do this without some of the Video Copilot plugins, so if you stick around once I'm finished, I'll show you how to do those too. So, without wasting any more time, let's get to it. It's morphing time. So we're gonna make a new comp. It's gonna be three seconds long. Let's make it 1920 by 1080. Twenty three point nine seven six and there we go. So let's make this simple. I'm gonna make a purple layer. We're gonna mess with the solid size, so I'm just gonna make it seven twenty by seven twenty. So it's a square. And we're gonna go into circle, lips tool, or masks a lips tool, double click. Duplicate the mask. Second version, subtract MN. Move the expansion in. We're going to go to the layer styles, layer styles, that is bevel and emboss. We're going to make this pop a little bit, look three dimensional. Go in, and we're going to just mess with the bevel. So we're going to up the size and mess with the angle. I want the shadow in that corner off to the right. All right, so that makes it look like it has some depth. We're gonna turn on the grid just so I can have an idea of the proportions here. And just move it down to that lower third. I'm gonna duplicate it. Get rid of the subtraction mask, solo it, turn off the grid, turn off the title safe. We're going to get rid of the layer styles. So now we just have a solid purple. We're going to change the settings on this one to be blue. Going to go to noise, fractal noise. Gonna set the mode to screen. And we're just going to keyframe the evolution. Time times 180. So it's gonna be moving pretty quick. Let's up the scale, down the brightness, up the contrast. And we're going to make this look a little bit cooler with a lens effect. CC lens. And we're losing a little bit there, so let's uh, bring some of the brightness back. There we go. We're going to put this underneath the magenta solid. Turn everything back on. And go into our CC lens and just up the size. It just fills up everything there. And line it up, and we've got a cool little lens effect. Now we're going to make our lightning bolt flying in. And for this, you're going to need the plugin from Video Copilot Element, which is an amazing plugin. But before we do that, we're just going to make a simple yellow solid. We're going to go in. I can already see a mistake because I can't see my mask tool because it's yellow on yellow. Let's make it blue. You having fun there? Yes! <laughs> okay, not the best, but it gets the point across. So we're going to make another solid, and we're going to just call this element. Make this one comp size. Doesn't matter what color it is. Then we're going to go to our element plugin. Alright, so we're going to go to custom layers. Custom text and masks, path layer one, we're gonna go to yellow solid one. Then we're gonna click scene setup. We're going to extrude and it's selected. 
the layer we just made for it. And now we can see we're getting a 3D version of that mask we made. And right out of the box, you get a bunch of really cool settings with an element. And we're going to go mess with some of the bevels and textures. So let's go to our presets, go to our materials. We can make it gold, which looks pretty cool. If you go into bevels, you can add a little bit of depth. by selecting one of these. For this one, let's just stick with basic gold. Let's go to the environment. Pick whatever environment you want. Um, I'm going to use Studio, uh, regular Studio. Just that way we get some harshness on it there in the reflections. I'm going to hit OK, turn off yellow solid, and then we're going to bring this down. So I'm going to go to group one, particle replicator. So I'm going to go to the beginning, move forward four frames. Everything's four frames. We're at two, so let's just move forward two. Let's lower this to a quarter res. Set a keyframe and then just, just right there. And you know what? Let's actually go back to the particle look and up the size. Let's turn the title safe back on, just so I don't go outside of it. And boom. Now let's mess with the rotation so it's coming at us at a bit of an angle. And already I can tell I want to extrude this more. So let's go back to the scene setup. So let's uh, let's up the bevel scale a bit because we get an interesting thing happening there, right there, on the edge. So I'll just click on Gold Basic and extrude it some more, and we're gonna hit OK. It's a little thicker there, which is good. All right, so we're gonna move back and then just animate it up. So it just funk, flies in. Now in the show it shakes around a bit and if this was a 2D layer I would say put your anchor point at the tip right here and then just mess with the rotation a bunch and it'll stay anchored right there but I'm new to Element 3D and I'm not sure if you can do an anchor point type deal so what you're gonna have to do instead is just mess around with it. So Boom, and I'm just setting the keyframes, getting the four two frames, twist it on the Y, rotate it on the X, copy the original keyframes, move forward one, move forward another two, or just one, up the size. So set a keyframe back where it's normal, up the size, try to keep that tip in the same position, and then go back to U again so I can see everything. Grabbing this row, this column, pasting it. And then we're going to just rotate it left a bunch. Then right a bunch. And then it comes down back to normal. Now we're going to turn on the motion blur, and when the motion blur comes on, it's going to look much better. It's going to look like it's really shaking all over the place. Next, go to new light. Just going to add a couple lights. And 
you know what, I kind of like the placement of that one by default. So we'll leave that there. Go make another light. Go make this one red. Go make this one over here. Back. And low. Not that low, right, right there. And you know what, let's change that one to orange, because orange would look better. There we go. Blends in a bit, but it's a little different than the white light. So that's the main part. Now we gotta do some of the background stuff. What's happening in the background is we've got lightning, 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 lightning. So we're gonna make some lightning. So with our lightning layer that we just created, we're going to make a couple copies. The first copy is going to just be cutting across the corners like so. Let's go in, change the glow settings, turn them down like before. Let's make the core radius three. Okay. And then alt click conductivity status, time, time 70. And then we're going to keyframe the origin and direction. Move those keyframes to the beginning of the comp. Go to the end of the comp. And we're just going to move them a bit so there's a bit of motion going on here. Not a ton, just a bit. Duplicate. On the second copy, we're going to change those keyframes. we we'll keep the rest of our settings. We're going to make this one go from the top to the bottom. And it's going to move across the top to the bottom. And we'll make one more duplicate. This one will start on this corner and pretty much just stay in that corner. We'll uh, move it out a bit. We're just getting three different lightning bolt looking things. Okay. We're going to put all of these underneath our footage, duplicate the bottom just so we can make a background. And we're going to do the Ryan Weaver glow again. Y'all should love this method by now. And hopefully you've got it memorized because I've done it so many times. Gaussian blur. Transfer mode. Screen. Let's start at 10. Duplicate. 20. Duplicate. 40. Duplicate. 80. And let's, uh, let's lower the opacity, 66%. Normally at this point we would colorize it with color balance, but if you look at the original effect, it's kind of like a rainbow of lightning all over the place. And within each lightning bolt, it's changing colors. So to achieve that effect, we're going to make another solid. We'll call this rainbow. We're going to put it above all our adjustment layers. And let's turn everything off above it, just so we can focus on this lightning here. We're going to go to Effect, Generate, Four Color Gradient. When you do that, you get this cool thing. So what I like to do 
So then keyframe all the points, move to the end of the comp, and then just move them around a bit. It doesn't really matter too much where, just so that way they move around. Because what you're going to do is apply these colors to the lightning below it and make it sample this frame for its glow. And since the glow is going to move around, it's going to look much cooler. All right, within our transfer modes, we're going to go down to soft light, although you can also pick overlay. I like to just scrub through and see if anything looks better or worse. But we're going to stick with soft light for now because that gives us the best looking glow. So you can see that now, instead of just having a white glow, the glow is sampling from that rainbow layer we just created. And since we got a weird edge, we're just going to go ahead and scale up our background. There we go. So let's turn these back on, except for yellow solid. We don't need that. We are super close. Now, I like to use explosions whenever possible. Let's do it, guys. Right. It's right. morphin' time. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't even know what happened behind me. I just thought it was funny. All right, so we're going to use three assets from Action Essentials. First is going to be just a regular firecracker. So this layer is going to begin right when our lightning bolt hits the bottom or the floor, whatever you want to call it. We're going to set the transfer mode to screen and we're going to colorize it. First tint it. Then we're going to go to color balance. We're going to move the midtone blues to negative 100, which is also yellow. Highlight blues to negative 75. Highlight reds to 100. And midtone reds to 100. We'll preserve luminosity. Then we'll go to effect, stylize, and glow. Let's move this down a bit more. And let's just uh, up the radius a hair. Then on top of that, or on bottom technically, we're going to add Fireball at Cam 2, which you can find in the explosions. The Firecracker you can find in the Sparks folder, Fireball at Cam 2, you can find in the explosions folder. We're going to put this on top, or right here. We're going to set this transfer mode to screen. And likewise, we're going to make this layer begin when the lightning bolt impacts. And let's just make sure we've got something happening. Scrub, 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 scrub. Right there. Alt, begin bracket. We're also going to speed this up. So we're going to go to time, time stretch, 75%. There we go. And again, we're going to apply a glow. Just let that glow expand out. There we go. And the last bit, slow sparks, which you can find in the sparks folder. It's the first one, slow sparks one. We're going to put this beneath our royal blue solid layer. And it's going to start up. When we have our impact. And let's just scrub to a point where we have some sparks actually flying. Right there is good. I'll begin bracket. Let's speed this one up a bit as well. Let's see how it's 50%. That's good. So we got some sparks flying. Literally, it's at a glow. And then mess with the glow threshold so we get more things going. So we're going to move the glow threshold down. All right, so that is it. That is everything you need to know to do the effect. Uh, wait, this is the Mastodon. I thought I was going to be the pink one. All right, so in between filming the rest of the tutorial and uploading it for this Wednesday, I actually got asked a question on YouTube 
for people who don't have those Video Copilot plugins I was talking about, optical flares and Element 3D. So if you don't have that, I've got you covered. I'm showing you some ways to get similar looking effects. So we're back in our morphing sequence, and I'm just going to go down to our two lens flare layers, and these are what's making our effect. I'm going to turn one of them off, and I'm just going to work on the top one. Actually, I'll delete the bottom one. So I'm going to take the top one, which is now our only one, I'm going to get rid of our two effects, and we're basically going to start from scratch from this layer. Let's solo it. And this is a modification of another effect on Video Copilot that they did in one of their tutorials, so credit goes to them. We're going to go to Generate, Lens Flare, and we're going to pick the 35mm Prime preset, and then just center up right in the middle. Then we're going to go to Fractal Noise, and we're going to keyframe the evolution by alt clicking and then typing in time times 60. So it's going to self animate. We're going to set the blending mode to multiply then we'll up the contrast. Then we're going to go to color correction tint, color correction color balance. We're going to put the midtone blues to 100, the highlight blues to 75, nothing new there. Check preserve luminosity. We're going to go to Generate Light Rays. We're going to put it right in the middle. And we're going to bump up the intensity. Then we'll mess with the radius a bit and a couple of the other settings. Then we're going to set the transfer mode to none so we're only getting the light rays effect. And then we're going to go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves and just add some contrast in here. Now we're getting something that looks pretty similar to the effect and then to put the finishing touch on it I'm going to go in here open the transform and then alt click rotation time times 70 so that way it'll rotate as well. Now the rays are going a little too far out there. Let's try and move those in by messing with the intensity. All right, so if we move the intensity to 110 and the radius to 300, we're getting pretty close. Maybe bump up the intensity. Let's bring in it back. And then if we duplicate this layer, and then go to the fractal noise, we can make the rotation go the opposite direction, similar to how we did in the first part of the tutorial. Let's set this to time times negative 70, and let's do time times negative 60 while we're at it. So like in season two, they ditched the whole green shirt idea and they just had them wear like colored undershirts of whatever color they were. I didn't like that. We're not doing that. <laughs> I just realized I have to do the Tyrannosaurus thing one more time from the closer up angle. So we'll see you in just a second. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do the lightning slamming into the circle effect without having Element 3D for the lightning bolt. So first thing we'll do is just turn Element 3D off. We'll delete it. And we're going to go to Yellow Solid, turn it back on with the eye switch, and we're going to go to Effect, Generate, Ramp. And in later versions of After Effects, I think it's called gra Gradient Ramp, I believe. So if you can't find ramp, look for gradient ramp. And we're going to make the top color yellow. And we'll make the bottom color orange. Let's bring these a little bit closer together. Then we're going to turn this into a 3D layer. Go to our anchor point and move it down to the bottom tip of the lightning bolt. Like so. And we're going to duplicate it. We're going to call the layer on top the front layer, and the layer on the bottom the back layer. And then we're going to hit R. I'm just going to bring up our rotation properties. We're going to hit the X rotation and then just bump it back a bit. 15 degrees should do it. So, what I'm doing and uh, I'll go to the left side so you can see, is I am making an angle 
for a 3D shape. So you can see we have here and then here. Now we're going to take the back, parent it to the front. So we're going to go to the front, hit R, then go to the same X rotation, move it forward just to kind of split the difference. Turn these back off, then go back to our front or active camera view. And I'm going to turn on a camera so you can see this better. But what we're doing is making a kind of pseudo 3D lightning bolt. And once we go to the back layer and change up the ramp, it's going to become much more apparent what we're doing. Let's make the back layer red to orange. Make that orange a deeper orange. So you can kind of see what's going on. It's, it's looking a little bit more three-dimensional. Now let's duplicate the front one more time. It's a little hard to see the shape, so we're going to outline it a bit. So we're going to go to Ramp, get rid of it. Go to Generate Fill. I'm just going to make it black. We're going to hit M, duplicate the mask. Go to the bottom layer, hit Subtract. MM, bring the expansion in. five pixels, turn our mask guide off, that way you can just see the shape of it a bit more. And then after that you just parent front two to the normal front and then you can just animate it coming down exactly like you did with the Element 3D. So you can just move it up. And then the nice thing about doing it this way is because since we do have an anchor point in here we can do another technique I like to use. Uh, we'll go to Expression Controls, Slider Control, then we're going to hit R, Alt-click on the Z rotation, hit Wiggle, 6, comma, and then pick whip to the slider, and then close your parentheses. And then we're just going to Go back a frame, set a keyframe on the slider, forward a frame, set it to 10, then 1, 2, 3, 4 frames later, set it back down to 0. So what's happening is it's just going to shake a bunch when it hits, just like we simulated with a 3D. Another way you can make your effect look better is if you apply a texture to it. Now again, I'm using a video copilot texture, but there's textures all over the internet. Or if you've got a digital camera, you can just go outside and take some pictures for textures yourself. Uh, the one we're using is just, just a, a cracked piece of concrete. So I'm betting you've got a camera and I'm betting you can get to some concrete really quick. So it should be easy to make this texture for yourself. So I'm just going to drag it right here to the front layer. I'm going to make it a 3D layer and parent it to the front layer. Then I'm just going to duplicate the front layer another time, put it above the texture, set the texture to alpha mat. Then if I move the original front layer to be above the third front layer and then set its transfer mode to multiply, you can see we're getting an interesting texture on the front face. And then you can do something similar for the back face and that would give you a much more interesting looking lightning bolt. So again, mess with it as much as you want and you can get some pretty interesting stuff without having those video code pilot plugins I was talking about. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this three-part tutorial, uh, we don't do too many of these. Usually we do more comedy videos, but we do do tutorials like this from time to time. But anyways, if you enjoyed it or you enjoyed the original morphing video and you somehow find yourself at the end here, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Like and comment below. Ask me questions. I did the modifications on not using the Video Copilot plugins in response to a question asked in the comments below. So if you ask something in the comments, who knows? I might uh, make that into something I do in a video later on. So. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next Wednesday with our next video.